KPB. Bird, bird man, fucking dirty cow. She put them on as tight as she fucking. I was in pain straight away. She wouldn't loosen them up when you fucking witch. And they put us in the fucking van. In one of them little boxes where you're like, oh, two and a half hours to put me in pain. And now one and a half there. When I got there, they refused to take them off us because I'm shooting them with the fucking pain. Get these fucking ratchets off. I blew my fucking head then when I realised that I was on the interview. I went, you fucking what? You fucking what? I'm fucking serious, man. You want to know where I was on Thursday? Is that it? That was it! I didn't have nothing! And that's what was my views! Could you not have asked us out of the fucking gate? I walked up to the desk sergeant. Oh, I'd done this when I knew I was getting ratcheted again, because I knew he was to blame. I walked up to him. I said, you know, I knew why you joined the police force, because you already look like a pig. From this Boristan solicitor, Neyman, the Winter Hill Gang members, is agents for Nensis. Next time you see Sean, you tell Sean this. You tell Sean he better get them videos to do it. Still in the hospital cell at this point because I stabbed us, but it only went halfway through my skull over the spike. Before I knocked the cunt out, I smashed him the bits out that he was unconscious before the school's gone. Last time I was obviously with you, you told me you retired from crime and then just last month on the internet I see your enemies like some attempt on their life and you get nicked for it, like what's going on? I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I still stand by what I said to you la la the last time <laughs> that I retired from fucking crime. You retired, so it was... Uh... That's just the police work ourselves. Speculating. So who do you think, who, obviously yeah, we don't even want to say... I didn't even want to think who's done it, yeah. but the uh, people who's been arrested for it, some of them come here fishing. Do they? Aye, it's been a bit. Aye, yeah, no. associated. That's why I've been nicked. Oh no. They have a reason. And uh, so, t t talk to me, obviously. You see that day where it was obviously up on the internet. And it all went straight up on the internet. It's crazy how people do stuff these days, isn't it? Where they put the videos up as they're trying to do the stuff. And then you weren't expecting to get a fucking knock, were you? Of the cops? Yeah. Well, to be honest, with have been my enemy. And after it had happened, after it had fucking the happened. The 80s voice did sound a little bit like yours. If it happened to Dave, yeah, something happened to Dave, did he you, got, I'd you, be thinking, oh, because you know I get to play him every time anyway. The voice at the start was similar to your voice, it did sound, but it's not quite the same, but you know, it was just like, they're on the side or something like this. I think I was on the internet when it happened, I think yeah. oh, not long after it, yeah. oh, I didn't have time to get on the internet when it's happened. My mate Paul contacted me first, sent us messages, he had a fucking, saying that it had happened. He had a close and I rate. went on the internet asking about it then. That's what happened. And I saw getting all sorts of messages, telling us. But it looked like, because obviously I only saw the first video and I thought, oh yeah, they're just there smashing up the place. But it looked like, then when I saw the second video, it looked like, no, they were smashing up the place to draw them out and then there was the other car waiting. To... Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't even know, to be honest. Doing like that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he was lucky his legs didn't get flattened. I don't know, to be honest, but um, with it being my enemy, obviously as soon as I seen it, brought a gleam to my face, you know what I mean? I thought, yes, you fucking wankers. Yeah. And because uh, I've been fighting with them for fucking decades, and I know what they're like, and I know what they get up to in that area over there, like the same as what they get up to in, they used to get up to in the West End. They like their fucking enforce, their domination. Uh, and what happened in terms of, uh, so this happened 
I was sitting going on to the internet that night, um, but I'm guessing it happened in the afternoon. And then did you get fucking raided here? A couple of days day, later. A couple of days later. Was it the early five o'clock in the morning thing? No, it was 12 o'clock at night or something. 12 o'clock at night? I'd and just come off the internet. Oh, I'd so just done a live. Yeah. What they were doing was making sure I had my phone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hi, oh, hi, oh, hi. I got rid of that. And oh, you, so they I was waiting. waiting for you to I was waiting for you to do that. That's right, that's right. I right, didn't get it. After. I was Did waiting. Hey, listen, man, I was waiting for them, waiting to get it, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, um, so they didn't get it. Um, For what? Did they come in more banded? Yeah. For I knew it, they were on us. Well, not on us. They were in 10 hundred. And I was at the gate with them. Phone's already gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought, I phone's already gone. Um, so I went to the gate. I went, what are you after? Can I speak to you? I went, why I? What are you after? Uh, we would like to speak to you. I said, well, what are you after? Is that all on camera? Yeah. And they wouldn't see you. says, can you come out, please? I says, I don't need you. You can explain yeah. So I was just going on like that. I wasn't being aggressive. I know. So eventually, I had to fucking give in and gone out because the corner is argumental wise, you know what I mean? Not that there was any arguments going on. And the, the cuffers straight away. But I let them cuff us with the ratchets. Bird, bird man, fucking dirty cows. You put them on as tight as she fucking Is that could. on the way there as well? They did this on the way both ways? So that, yeah, 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 I'm just telling you what started though. Yeah. I haven't worked myself yet with them. I've just been speaking to them, it's all on camera. And then when I got the other ratchet on, I was in pain straight away. I don't know if you've had them on where they twist your hands the opposite ways as well, run your back when they're putting them on. It's ridiculous, man. It's an act of torture. They're not getting away with it. And she wouldn't take on loosen them. I've told her straight away they're too tight, they're hurting us. She wouldn't she wouldn't loosen them. She put them on tighter. Why are you complaining? They did that on That's purpose. when I fucking started. Yeah, fucking witch. And she wouldn't she wouldn't take them off. She wouldn't loosen them up when yeah, fucking witch. And they put us in the fucking van. In one of them little boxes where you're like, oh, in, you know, in a little back. Box, box. Why do they need yeah. to put their oh. ratchets on if you're in one of them sweat boxes? Anyway, and you're not working yourself. So they had us in a sweat box for a new act till they got us at the police station. Which police station is it, yeah? Wall's End. But I'm in a twin wheel, big twin wheel van. Took my fucking new uh, I'm in pain all the way. Terrible pain all the way. It'll all be on camera because apparently these boxes are videoed as well. Um, and you know you can request the video for I've told the solicitor, I've stuff. already told the solicitor, you know the idea, get, tell them to keep all these videos, I'm taking this to Parliament, yeah. and I'm going to get them ratchets banned as a device of torture. They shouldn't even be using them on people. They shouldn't. And if they're going to use them on people, why do you have to twist the hands like that, run the back, when you're up using these ratchets on them, and put them in pain before you even... What, why, what right do they put any cut in pain? Two and a half hours have put me in pain, and now one and a half there... When I got there, they refused to take them off us because I'm shooting them with the fucking pain. Get these fucking ratchets off. I'm in fucking terrible pain, man. Terrible fucking pain. I'm like this. And they went, shut up and stop shouting. I went, I want these fucking ratchets off. Get them off. And because I was shooting like that, they left them on around right about half hour. Till I stopped shouting. And when they, when they come to take them off us, I couldn't get them off because my hands were that swelled up. I asked them to take photos of my hands just to show people afterwards to the sergeant who had left them on for an extra half hour. Uh, and he wouldn't take photos. This is all on camera because I've got cameras in the cells. So I've told the solicitor, the tell them we want all these videos and kept. And the, the, the police will have their camera on. on all the way, all, I asked them before story, yeah. got video cameras on there before the gate. They said all they had their body cams on. Yeah. They agreed that they did. Yeah, yeah, they actually have to tell you, but none of them ever do that they're recording. But they're no, you're you supposed to. Yeah. Um, so it's all on camera and you'll see I didn't start until left arm in pain. And they've done it on the way back too. <laughs> But, um, so when you got to this sta station, obviously they put you in. How long did they hold you for before they, before they questioned you in that? Fucking 18 hours, 12 hours, and I'm not sure. And were the people shouting in the cells next to you? Did, did you know other people being nicked or anything like this? No, you I didn't like, chat to no one else or nothing no, like this? I, I could hear a girl in the next cell, but I didn't know what she was in for. Did you get your lawyer down or did you just go in there to know, come on, you didn't even need a lawyer? Well, I didn't need a lawyer. So when, when I didn't need a lawyer, I always say, when I ask you if you need a lawyer, I always give me enemies. I tell you all this, because he always says, I can't represent him. You know what I mean? We're obvious in it. And when they come and tell us, he, oh, oh we've shit. checked and he said he can't represent you, I'll go, oh, well, I'll have to do without and won't I? And I usually deal with it that way, you know? Yeah. 
I've been put in that position. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But this time, in between doing that at the desk and line thinking about the whole situation in the cell, I've got about 10 hours, 12 hours lying there thinking. I thought, you know what it is? The best thing I can fucking do is answer questions on this interview. Did you think you were going fitted up at that point there when you... Um... I thought I'd been fitted up. Yeah. I thought that the best thing I can do is answer questions on this interview um, and get a lawyer in. So when they come back and tell us that um, he kind of represent us, the enemies, I said, oh, well, I'll have one of my co-accusers, Slizz does, anyone will do. I'll have, but I'll have one of them. Um, cause, cause they've told us there's others locked up. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know who. But I thought I left one of there. Somebody who's involved in the fucking case. Anyway, it saves a lot of fucking hassle afterwards. Just because I'm not on legal aid, I know. And if you look, other people are on legal aid. It gets a lot of the work done. Yeah. Well, you'd need done. Well, you'd have to fucking pay for, cause you're not on legal aid. Um. So I said I left one of the co-accused lawyers. And they said, right, we've gotten you one co-accused. I went out day. And then the common says, um, oh, he says he can't represent you in either conflict of interest. Um, I said, well, listen, just get us a fucking duty one. I've just thought I'll have one here there for this interview. So they got us a duty one, um, which has turned Jude as one of the co accused anyway. But they got us a duty one. And I took the interview. And talk to me about how the interview went and which coppers are in there with you and what sort of qu questions. Well, I tried to be all week with them at first. Yeah. And I says, right, we want to talk to you about um, this, that, and the other. I said, no, bother. I said, well, I'm not like normal interviewers. I want to talk to you about a few things as well, Eddie. <laughs> so crack on. Um, I says, I says, uh, that's is a question. I think they said, where were you on Thursday? Thursday gone. Obviously meant the day of the incident, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I wasn't even thinking that at that time. I'm probably thinking, on well, fucking was that I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah. I don't believe you asked me where I was four mate, days ago. I wouldn't mate, remember. I was no, going to ask questions about where I was six years ago on this date at this place. What were you doing in London on this day? I live fucking next to London. Like, what were you doing in this place? Mate, come on. And so I, I couldn't me. remember. So I tell them I couldn't remember. I said, right, you, ask, uh, you, you answer me a fucking question, no. Why have you tort just tortured me for a new and a fucking half, dragged me from my fucking home? What justified in your fucking head, evidence-wise, to put me through that? Because I know I'm completely fucking innocent, yeah, right? What justified in your fucking head to put me through that? Spit it out now on fucking camera. This is in front of the solicitor, and he's got his colleague there. And they couldn't come up and out. No evidence, uh, anything, not anything. And you know, if it's a case like that, they just wanted they, to know where I was need, on first day. Why do they need to come here and fucking put you in these? Fucking they just wanted to know where you were on fucking, fucking first. I blew my fucking head then when I realised that I was on the interview. I went, you fucking what? You fucking what? I'm fucking serious, man. Yeah. They wanted to know where I was on first day. Is that it? That was it! I didn't have nothing! And that's what was my views! Yeah. Could you not have asked us out of the fucking gate? That was it! Tortured me for an hour and a half, man! An hour and a half in severe pain! We'll get the cameras and prove it! Why should I go through that? On that fucking evidence! Of course. We want to say that's where you are, Fuzz, and that's all I could ask us. I blew me fucking lid! I bet. I bet. And um, so did they release you pretty much straight after? No, I kept as little. Uh... The last point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, me I fell out with them by this you know, point. Mistake me if you're wrong. And then even, so at the point where they released you, did you get released under investigation, released, charged? What was the statement? Well, it was, they said you're going on bail at first. Yeah, are you on bail at this point? No, I no, said so stick no. your bail up, you fucking arse. Absolutely. You're not saying to me you're on fucking bail. Um, and I must be on that interview, you're not saying to me you done fucking bail, I'm not having it. And I'm right now. Yep. Uh, and I stood by me grunt. And, and they kept us till uh, about an hour and a half before the loud, they got it as long as, they, as long as they can't keep you. I was doing to the last hour and a half, they let us out. 
And don't get me right if you're wrong. And then when they brought you back, they put you back in the things. Oh, to bring you don't back. Come Why right. they fucking put you back? Because I've been shouting you... and bawling at them every fucking yeah, opportunity. You're in the state where they you see you the camera? Them. I yeah. walked up to the desk sergeant so at that you, point when he's when the ratchet it is. I walked up to the desk sergeant. Oh, I done this when I knew I was getting ratchet at again because I knew he was to blame. I walked up to him. I says, you know, I knew why you joined the police force because you already look like a pig. And listen, man, this is the best part of it. Everybody agrees with us. He does look a bit oh, piggy shit. and put. No, man, serious, man. This is why you've got to hit them where it hurts. And he did look like a pig. <laughs> listen, everybody in it. There's a big police station with loads of people sitting around desks and that. Everybody put that. How you doing? And I said to him that. You joined the police force because you already look like a pig. And everybody knew I was telling the truth. They put him look like a pig. Out. And so then, obviously, then they have to do the same journey all the way back with these Aye, on in the, in the back box. of a fucking little, va- little um, car this time. Worse, fucking limit. worse. Absolutely Three times I went through my mind, kick him in the fucking head to make him crash. Yeah, no, I was in that much pain. No, no, good. I'm glad you didn't. And so, hopefully, now what are you going to do? You need to do a civil claim against these fuckers treating you like this. You Listen, I've put. I've had, did you go to the hospital? Or? Nah, what's oh, the fucking point? Fucking. Uh, listen. Were your things bruised up in that the next yeah. day? Yeah, of course they were. Are they saw and all that. Yeah. It's all on camera. I mean, all when I'm in the cell. It's like, hey, man, I still kind of feel it. How long had it been? I feel it, but it still feels numb. How long had it been since you've been in a cell and that? Oh, I'm, I, I get took the cells quite often. Anyway. Oh, so it hadn't been years and years. No, no, the guy was ragging me in for one thing over. Yeah, but obviously this one here. You've but they haven't ragged us in for seven years. Like eight, eight, eight years since I've been with this new wife. Yeah, so it's been um, a while. Thank God. Pun. It's been a while since you've been in the cells and that, and then you're thinking, nah, they. That doesn't only make the cells, like it does with my people. No, no, of course. We've well, done fucking a load in the fucking cat A's, ain't you, and all this sort of stuff. I've done so. tons, of, like, I've done months and months and months in solitary confinement in different prisons. So I'm, so when they lock me up for 24 hours, like, like normally they'll, they'll leave, break them, leave them for 24 hours before we even talk to them, just to break them doing a bit. That bit doesn't work with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Makes me worse. And you know, uh, Obviously, a couple, few weeks before that, when you see uh, Glover and Cookie on the Atwood show with fucking uh, Humphreys, you must have been surprised. I was surprised that they brought Glover back out. Do you know what freak I mean? Freak show. The freak show it was. Well, That's no, why I thought. I was, that I was very surprised. What I say is that some people, if they're not in the right mind and on heavy medication, I don't know if it's right that they'd be put on camera. That's all he's, that I would he's say. He's also diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. He's on injections and. Yeah. Um, he's 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 in a mess. Any he? you can see he's see. in a mess, and they're just abusing him, really. You, you just shouldn't be putting people on because they've obviously told him certain scripts. Obviously, and then, uh, yeah, to, to, to promote shit against me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was all for you. Everything was. Everything was. It wasn't an interview about Glover. It was get Glover on to talk about Paddy. That's what it was. Yeah. It was and it's been with, their narrative with, of with, party. with Cookie and Humphreys there in order to prod him in the right direction to go. Well, did you notice I never really, I, I'd have much to full interview where I've asked people, because I knew they wouldn't. What the real crunch of everything that's going on here, what is the real crunch of everything that's going on between all of it? What is it? Faith's murder. Yep. Did you notice they didn't prod, like, delve, try to delve deeply into anything that they're seeing? About that murder, of course. regarding me, they never did it. Of course. Well, was I telling you on the tone that the fucking want that narrative? They didn't want to interfere with that narrative. So Mr. Humphreys, although he puts his evidence up there, what he doesn't ask and what he doesn't do shows where he's coming from. For my money. Yeah. That is party. He tries to say I'm just this and I'm I'm not involved. But this, his own actions tell you he looks after these people who are accusing me of these murders. He protects them. He it does. looks like he's sort of uh, the media side for you. No, he's more than that, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll think about it. You've got Cookie Ingloban in front of yeah. you. It's Viv's murder. Your gang's blaming Conroy, who you're protecting. Um, and these people, Cookie Ingloban, are helping. Helping your gang. Yep. So, with what they want to say about Conroy and this murder. Aren't they? That's the situation he's in. Yeah. So, so, so. I know it's this serious stuff, isn't it, going on? But, it's, but um, he's a crime writer and he's a crime author and blah, blah, blah. You'd think he'd be saying, well, Glover, when he asked you to 
do this and when did it happen, what time, how did it come out right, you know, them sort of nail them down. They don't nail any of them down or nothing, they just let them see what they've got to see and sort of leave it at that time. Mm. You know what I mean? From my perspective. Yep. No, obviously they weren't there to uh, do an investigation. Yeah, but, 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 but they? Well, it's a fucking murder and they're trying to put the murder onto my fucking tours, all of them. Yeah. With everything they're presenting and promoting, it's putting a murder down to my fucking trust. So you think if you're doing that to someone, you at least be fair with the evidence and see what the, you'd expect to be doing. You're not impartial, is it? Yeah. Well, if you were impartial, you wouldn't be just leaving it at that when these people were fucking there, uh, seeing these things and whatnot, would you? Because it's, oh, it's no, you'd be delving oh, in. It's, it's and it, no, he's guilty by his fucking actions. That could. Yeah, these things aren't impartial. They, they're... Uh Set a certain narrative, aren't they? Painted narratives, these these things. So yeah, well, this is perverting the course of justice on a murder case, so man, isn't it? Crazy. From anyone else's point of view, then the fear. Listen, if I haven't committed that murder, what are all of them doing? Yep. They're perverting the course of justice on, with evidence on this murder, aren't they? Yep. But um, so how do you would you want to progress stuff with like these people now because before i can remember when they went on with all these fake documents on the atwood show before see uh, them fake documents yeah i'll tell you a story well, how they come about come about in prison at first man maximum security prison i was in touch with a kid called weldon who was charged with a kid called one of the went gang hunt they both went L sort of people not my firm, but they used to speak to me. And he getting a letter from this Boristan solicitor, Neyman, the Winter Hill Gang members, as agents for Nensis. And he put it in black and white. I'll give you the letters, I will. I'll, I will give you the correspondence. So I got in touch with everybody involved, even the solicitor involved. And the solicitor sent me a copy, the solicitor did himself, a copy of that letter and the correspondence following that letter between himself and the Winter Hill Gang solicitor. The one I asked for the other night at the police station. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and I've got the correspondence between the two of them, where one of them is naming these two as agents for the Crown, you know, I had this in prison. So I sent a copy of it up to Franklin Prison to ask these cunts, yeah, what's going on, yeah? Straight away, didn't I? I, mean, I was really battling on, sent them a copy, of it, straight to them. They've passed it to their solicitor, their solicitor's getting in touch with this solicitor, and this is the correspondence. I've gotten back, I've started this correspondence by my actions. Um, and I've got the full correspondence. And this, this solicitor, and a barrister, he is, he's not just a solicitor, he's a barrister of law. Member of the bar, he says they work for the National Criminal Intelligence Service. And when my enemy, the Winter Hill Gang, knew I had this paperwork in prison, they then got that bundle of paperwork concocted, knocked up as quick as possible. If you look at the time and the dates, everything in that fucking bundle, it'll take you back to them days. That's people who were their associates, their friends, right in the MPs and getting MPs to write letter on their behalf and it was all knocked up as a counter against me paperwork in prison and that's where that bundle of paper will come from but there's none of it got any substance foundation if you delve into it this is why I wanted a due diligence uh, challenge done with them on that paperwork and they've refused to do it both haven't they all of them yep. they're, they're getting anywhere if you follow my videos yeah no no they've no refused point I, fucking I, I blank blanked they've gone anywhere near any due diligence checks on up here at work? Yeah, I thought maybe, you know, when I came up here last time, six months ago, whatever it might have been, I was talking about maybe this might be because I've got, uh, I do speak to Sean, I've got, um, I can't get messages back and forth, so, but I, when they had, obviously, Glover and uh, Finger, I thought, no, there's no chance of anything like this. Like, he's got a very close relationship with Rafe, clearly. Next time you see Sean, you tell Sean this, or me. <laughs> We don't see each other a lot. Cunt. So. You tell Sean he better get them videos talked to. Him. Mm. But yeah, was, I've got umpteen people. And I have words with Sean. I don't think uh, anyone around uh, the country when they see him. 
But you know, I'll uh, forget the opportunity to see him. You know, at this point here, no one thinks obviously you're a grass or anything like this. It's not something that's just stuck with you at this Listen, point. Listen, they've so had bundles of fucking paperwork on their show. What they've refused to retract. Mm. Hey man, these are Freemasons, man. For some reason, a Freemason, upright man by the society. See, and I'm a police informer with this bundle of paperwork. Mm. And he's standing there saying, I've got evidence concrete. I've said, all right, then, let me go through it and do a due diligence on that paperwork. And they've refused. So as soon as Atwood, seeing him refuse to do that, Atwood should have took them videos done. Yeah. And should have put a public apology out, stating that, to all his public, that that was wrong, that paperwork, what he used on, that paper, on, on his show. He's refused to go through a due diligence check with me on it. Mm. So since then, I've went, all right then, I want to go, I'm going to use my paperwork against you from the jail. Same paperwork, because they've used it against me on that much show. And I've re, re thingied my paperwork from the barrister and solicitor, what yep. names these people. See, the problem is, see, these people are, are the real killers of Viv, murderers of Viv, and they're blaming me for Viv's murder. And the problem is they're working for the fucking cops and I've got them black and fucking white there working for the fucking cops. Not only the cops, the fucking National Criminal Intelligence fucking agency. And this is out of a member of the ball's fucking mouth. I can tell you the full tale that we found out. It'll come out legally in a case. Um, and the, the problem is now that we're fine on my hands now is the three people named in the murder confession, the real murder confession by Glover regarding Viv's murder the three of them all work for the police and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Legit paperwork. That can any credence check can be done on. I've not refusing they've refused to do a credence check on the paperwork they use against me, but I've not refused to do any credence check with them on this paperwork. It's just they're refusing the challenges on it. I've invited them. So right, I just think, right, my paperwork's can run all these podcast shows. Um to prove all of Viv Graham's murder, murderers worked for the authorities. Glover worked for the local crime squad, intelligence, doing operations against me. The intelligence side of the police, crime squad, which was high level back in them days. We in, showed that before. Glover in, had been uh, an informant from fucking early years. <laughs> since I was nightclub affair, he's, he's since done a video admitting it that yeah. he turned grass in the Oz nightclub yeah. uh, for, that's what did happen yeah, but not just him not just him a number of them did everybody involved did because someone co come and told me one of them had agreed to do it has since come and seen me and Bull and confessed everything that happened to us that night and what happened with him was he was took to Robocop's office Ray Allen and he told us that they had a big uh, like the Americans when they have the photos on the wall in the pyramid, <laughs> he says, behind his desk, behind them on the wall, he says, in your pictures at the top, <laughs> this is in Robocop's office. <coughs> oh, shit. We didn't get on. Anyway, me and him didn't get on. I can tell you loads of tales. We have chased him with the interview room as well. Oh, that shit. fucking arsehole. Oh, well, he is. He's, he's fitted me up for, for the Winter Hill Gang as well, or their cop, a number of times. If you looked into my life, I was charged with Norm Robbie, what Brian Charrington set us up for, and put on remand. And when I was on remand, really in the him. cell, who's lying next door to us? My enemy, charged with a Sunderland Post Office robbery, waiting to go up on trail. This is where this cop is going to give evidence to collapse the case, and he's going to mention me and the evidence that he's seen them come through to my house. Yeah. And now, he's got me charged with an armed robbery, in jail, just ready from giving this evidence, I see, that's why I was fitted up, man. I see, with that robbery, just to justify his fucking evidence in that court. For my money, um, if, if you looked into it, uh, if you looked into both cases and seen what had happened in both cases, you'd say he's been fitted up, he's completely fucking innocent, and it just coincidentally happens at that time and when he's getting blamed for armed robberies off this cop in evidence, the biggest robbery trail ever in the country against a post office. Yeah. Um, that's the evidence he gave. He gave evidence and he's seen these, him who had his premises smashed up coming out of my house. So fucking hell, I didn't think that Brian was actually uh, informant. I thought he Brian was just, Charlton. Yeah, I thought he just corrupted the, the no, feds. I, so no, just doing... I bought a load of stuff off him one day and delivered it and I just used him because it was a wagon load. I got him to deliver it straight to a fella I'd sell today. And then the only person I fucking knew that sell this fella this stuff was fucking me. It was corned beef. 
was fucking me and his fucking deli him and his delivery drivers. It's the first time I'd use them to do that. Actually deliver something for us because I was instead of swapping wagons or whatever we would up in them days. I got them to drop it straight off to the buyer. And it got raided. I felt like I got fucking raided in the fund of kill corn beef. And then I felt awful. Fucking awful. But then a few weeks later one of the people involved with this fella who must have had been cops or something, they knew they come to me and says, Was somebody called Charrington involved? And that's when I went, aye, as it happened, it was aye. So they had fun out something about that raid. Yeah. That I had and, uh, and they knew it was Charrington. Yeah, so I always believed. So I, I knew then it was Charrington. Yeah, fucking hell. So I always believed that he was, because I know he'd corrupted his handlers at the same time, so I believed it was a way that he was sort of doing it for a safety. And it was at this time through. where he got that robbery set up and got me nicked and then implicated in it, if I tell you the full tale. Yeah, because I can remember his handlers were driving around in brand new BMWs that registered in Brian's name and all this. From his garage? Yeah, and all this sort of stuff at the time. and. I hand, said, my boy, I'll not tell you what I've done. When I funded that, he had half a million quid in his loft. <laughs> oh, oh, two million quid he got caught with, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 I remember. I'd yeah. already fell out with him at this point. Yeah. I knew what he was. Okay, like that. But at yeah. that point, well, you got Nick with Curtis. Yeah, because I, I speak to his son a little bit. I've been trying to get his son to do an interview because he ended up getting caught up with stuff down the line. But his son always says that his dad wasn't obviously an informant and that it was obviously maybe playing. Is that my idea? I didn't know about the background of the stuff. This, the he, he became a very powerful man with obviously these connections and safety net that he was getting. Ah, that's fucking reach. Really that's fucking reach. Too really, many. Yeah, Too big. Yeah. Of course, he was an informant. Um, from back in my days, it was him who set me up for that post office. Yeah. For for him to give evidence in the Sunderland post office robbery trail last year. That's what the whole setup was for. For my money. Yeah. Yes, sir. How did you know um, Brian and how did you end up coming to buy that wagon worth stuff from? Obviously, you hadn't known him long then, if that was the first No, I knew him a couple of years. Yeah. A few years, a couple of years. And, um, and he was a bit of a fierce doing in Teesside anyway, he making was. Making a name for himself. Or... A little fierce, you know what I mean? Back in the day. Car, um, car dealer, was he, yeah. No, this, this was before he was a car dealer. Yeah. This is when he was just a villain. I knew him, you know what I mean? Just like everyone else. It's all he done, villainy. Mm. And buying and selling stuff as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I used to buy and sell stuff too. So I used to buy stuff off him. That's all I've done. Bought yep. stuff off him. Um, and then that one day sent it straight to the buyer and the buyer got raided. And then no, he come to me. Yeah. And I knew he went shooting pigeons, seagulls on the beach regularly. That was his hobby because I'd known him a couple of years and he'd mentioned a few times he'd gone shooting seagulls. <laughs> But anyway, comes through this day when I've got somebody with us in my house. He said, oh, I'm looking for a new gun pad for shooting seagulls, blah, blah, blah. Do you know where I can get one? A gun, shotgun. And the kid who was in my house at that time went, oh, I know there's one. It's a legit one. Um, it was a legit one, proper registered yeah. in somebody's name, but it was for sale. And he says, I can sort, we can sort that out. So we ended up making 50 quid out of the sale. Yeah. But it's a legitimate gun. What Charlton, as far as I was concerned, was getting used to shoot fucking seagulls. Uh, and then it ends up fucking getting used in an arm robbery, what he set up, shot the postmaster on the fucking head, left the gun, left the fucking gun. So obviously it's a fucking straight gun, and it? A registered fucking gun. Obviously, where did they go? Obviously, back to you, Lord. Back to, back the, to the fucking, that's fucking right. That's fucking, that's what happened. So obviously, right then well, everybody knew the score with me. When I get locked up, yeah. what do I say? Cool. That's right, aye, and that, they knew that before they set me up for that. That was a situation. I was charged with armed robbery, I couldn't say a fuck all. Um, Charlton's not charged with the robbery. It was all these like, people he'd get to do the robbery. Um, could gone into the case. They, they, they fucking what? That was a setup for the. I see, not to get, get me, to get me for him giving that evidence in the Sun and Post Office robbery trial. I see, it was all set up for. I collapsed the case myself in the old sale committal. Um, that robbery approved some corruption where they couldn't get out of it. Serious corruption. And I collapsed the case myself. That's how I got out of the robbery eventually. It wasn't like they were letting us go after they've done that job, give that evidence. He's innocent anyway. We've set him up, let him go. No, it wasn't the case that I had to quit the, get the case. I collapsed me fucking self as well because we're going to jail us.
Yeah, it's crazy. It's like when you listen to all this sort of stuff and then what I've seen my own eyes, anyone out there is thinking about getting into a life of crime and thinking that they're going to do it in a like, straight way and all this sort of stuff and there's loyalty amongst thieves, just don't bother, don't get into the life of crime because there's so many wrong ones out there, isn't there, Pat? These days. Oh, yeah, and it's... Oh, these days. You're fighting a losing battle with the technology and the fucking informants out there. That's right, though, that's right, though. The, 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 just don't do it, get a job. My advice is if you're going to be a criminal, just stay a petty. Yeah. Where they don't even... It, where you just come to the attention of the local police and nobody else. If you, if you get in anything big, I know there's... They've got a system in place that watches you. It's a number of different crime agencies mm. and they've got all the informants working for them, not the police nowadays. And that's why they've got their system set up so you can't get on what how they got you. When did they get you and get you into court? Because they use the agencies to do all the investigation and watching and then they send the cops in at the end. Mm. You know what I mean? After they've done everything that they need to do, the agencies. Of course. It's bad, man. Of course. Um, and the agencies, they all are tuning in through your phones and listening to hear what you're saying through Siri and that. They've got machines that listen to your full conversations, man. Oh, nice. They'll just put one on your phone and your phone will monitor your conversations for the next week and Siri will sort out the conversations for them but you want to got some interest in yeah. like tag words um, clever man notice how, how they can monitor people at a touch of a switch crazy and how they can do millions of years at once if they want <laughs> so that's how the crazy bit is they can do millions of people at once yeah. if they want Hopefully. the same cops um, is involved after the Curtis Warren case same cops same bent squad from down at, at Manor are involved with the Phil Berryman shipment of drugs too. And if you look into what happened in that shipment of drugs, he man, it's a disgrace. I've got the customs statements where Phil Berryman signed up the customs months before I've even escaped from prison. Before he's took me out of the country. He signed up the customs. I'm getting my photo talk getting on the boat. There's loads to explain about that case yet. That's never he doesn't explain any fucking book. Nuts, isn't it? Uh, he doesn't admit that he, he he went and signed up the customs. I'll show you the statement. It's on me phone. It's all a show. They're trying to pretend my man's the most wanted man in Britain while they're photographing That's you. Right, fucking I getting onto a boat to fuck off to try and play along with this big story. Whatever they're going to make. On the up. biggest shipment of drugs in fit British you up, history. Fit you up on a huge shipment. This one it. shipment is the biggest shipment in biggest history. Remember, that's why they're loaded off here. Controlled delivery. I say it was controlled escape. If it was looked into. Glover admitted us at court that he'd phoned yeah, Smith, the cop, um, at least five days before we escaped, telling them that we escape was going ahead, blah, 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 blah. So they definitely knew. There's no doubt about it. They definitely fucking knew. And then when you look at everything else, when they get us on the boat, I'm getting my photos took. We didn't leave that the next day. I'm Britain's number one wanted fucking criminal, man. So who's taking the photos? They ended up in the court case of Phil Bowman. I mean, I've seen the photos of me climbing on the boat. Who's taking them photos? Intelligence, obviously. Yeah. Well, well Bowman signed up the customs and excise three months earlier. And he's given them information about me. He's given them information saying I've, he, he's come involved with me to try and smuggle 50 kilo heroin. I've got the paperwork. Mm -hmm. 50 kilo heroin from... Turkey, yeah, and maybe. but if you knew the truth of the story, maybe, he approached me. Yeah, and I remember you said that you turned it down, and then obviously uh, the, I the, stopped smacking her and went man. And then when he approached me, I fucking tell him fucking so blah blah blah. But he went and tell the customs are fucking opposite, as part of, of of getting into them before he's done what he's done with the shipment of drugs. And customs are watching the his cops who he's working with. He's been sent to net to sign his up by the cops, hasn't he? Yep, of course. If they, they, to keep yourself right, officially or something. Come on. Ah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, what was I going to say there? Hey, man, if you look into the case, and then tape recording. I had the transcripts of the tape recording, but I've lost them now. But there'll be a run somewhere. Um, the full transcripts. When the cops gone into the interview room, first thing they say, it's Conroy's drugs, Phil, it's Conroy's drugs. Do you know what I mean? Because he shouldn't have been nicked. He shouldn't have been nicked. We now need to tell him what to say. We speak about these corruption and that. Obviously, that was a record bust at the time. Fucked up by corrupt cops. The fucking Warren fucking Charrington case. Fucked up by corrupt Customs cops. Customs are watching them busies doing there because of Curtis Warren's case. At that point in time, because they've just collapsed the case, watching them. 
when the Berryman thing come into play. Yeah. So they were straight on to them because the same fucking cops, man. And that's what's went on, yeah. This is why they rushed in that day and arrested Berryman and said to the cops, steer away from him. Steer away from him. You're not even getting a chance to tell him what story to tell. Yeah. Yep. You're not allowed to visit him. Yeah, but they did. And as soon as they walk in the interview room, they tell him what story to tell. It's gone rice drugs, Phil. It's gone rice drugs. It's on the tape. It's on the fucking tape. And Phil Berryman's first response to that is, You know I shouldn't have been on that boat. It's on the tape, I'm saying that. How can the cops know crazy. he shouldn't have been on that boat? Crazy, crazy. I mean, when I was younger, I used to think that corruption wasn't a big thing in this country. And obviously, in terms of if your police officer pulls you over, it's difficult to fucking pull out some money out your wallet and tell them to fuck off once they've radioed it in. But obviously, within, it these, free that way, but yeah, within these Freemason halls and in these pubs and in these old school friendships and stuff like that, what? It's, it's, what? Abs it's absolutely right it is. That's a and trait, like I, said, I read a, those public community documents and all the London firms recently. Oh, it has so been absolutely it, it, right. It fucking is. It has been. No, I don't make it right for these days. No, it's a whole new system firms, in these days. The, the old firms are still there, though, yes, some of them. They've still got these same people. That's but, really, and the Masons and that. Yeah. Aye, there's old firms, firms of Masons, aye. That's what's going on, yeah. That's mm. what's going on, yeah. Mm. Um, this is why I've been trying to get Mr. Humphrey's role in, in the Masons investigated and all this because of what he's been doing in... in, in in what do you call them when they put people in the masons? Yeah, introduce them. What's the word? Um, anyway, he he's been putting a lot of people in the masons, and you see him who's got his premises smashed up a few yep. weeks ago. Yeah, he's his one of his pals. He's godfather. All his children, not one, all of them. That's how close you are. Who is Rafe? Is no, no the pal. Him looks he who got his place oh. smashed up. Yeah, yeah. He's pals with this kid. So Polly, he's godfather to all his children, yeah. right? And just introduced them into the Freemasons. Do you know what I mean? So, so I'm right in point, dude. The Winter Hill, the Winter Hill gang have infiltrated. Yeah, Freemasons do take fucking criminals in as well. So, like, between... if, if if they're handy to them, yeah, like so if I, they can I, control them and use them. I know someone yeah. who. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, the old school ones. Who's, who's, who's just come out of a 22 year sentence well, and they're letting him straight back in. That's been the system, man. That's been the system, but I don't think that's the system these days. Well, I think it's changed. Yeah. Because of the corruption that's come around because of it. But that was the system through the Masons and taking certain villains into the Masons. Of course. So they can use their villains to stay on top of... The ones that were into Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's obviously what went on. Yeah, with the Winter Hill Gang. Ken Kenny Noy was always... Kenny Noy was in the Masons, Mason, that's right, aye. He got a fucking... No, he, no he's been a different boy. kettle of fish, though, before they realised he was a villain. He wasn't in up to murdering loads of people. No. Do you know what I mean? Even if he always bent. Clever, so so there's, loads of, there's a few mess. That's the ones I like to take in. Yeah, the quiet fence ones. With this one, yeah. When you look at the amount of murders that's went on, yeah, by this gang. And they've, took, they've got the leader of the gang in. Right up until Freddy Knight's murder trial, he was one of them. Um, to be honest, I think he's out now. Because Making I think so, I'm just surmising. No, he's been nicked. They put him up a court for, took all his assets off him. Um, they didn't actually get him up a court because he pulled the one psychiatric report where he couldn't stand trial. But they still put him on trial in his absence where they could take all his assets off him. This is the Freemason one. And convicted him in his absence, even though he's on, you know. Um, and they've took all his millions of them. Took the lot. So I very much doubt he's in the Masons himself today. But he'll still have all his crew of people in there who he's, who he's got shit on yeah from over the years oh aye, oh aye, that's their job this this firm get so shit on people change, changing the topic slightly um obviously the taxman i don't know if we need to mention him by name says that obviously you torched him at one point didn't he, he said you kidnapped him who Is it brian didn't say i kidnapped him what you went into a house and end up torched. he says this he says many stories doesn't he and, yeah, and there's obviously no truth in this at all and that what were your dealings with him back in the day and that I've passed a lot of these tests proven that I haven't committed the offences what he has claimed on Mr. So his where did podcast that, show. Listen, where did that listen. come from from obviously these other sides? part of their yeah. gang man yeah. part of their fucking gang oh, so, so take my either that or if you watch all his podcast shows he admits yeah. he suffers from illusions from his Crohn's disease he suffers from crack cocaine, 
psychosis back in them days. He's been a crackhead for all his life, so he's been suffering crack cocaine psychosis. He admits this, so it may be part of his psychosis. I don't know. You know they may have put him up for it. Um, but what I do know is this is for fucking sure. When I was lying on remand in prison for that offence, he came to visit me and he told me that them two, them two what we're talking about, that I've got the paperwork on, yeah. them two had been to see him in hospital and wanted him to say this and say that and blah, 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 Fucking but that he wasn't going to do it. Listen, I said, will you come to court next week and tell them that, 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 that this is what's going on? He said, I will. And he come to court. And soon as the cops knew what was going on, because the cops are behind all this, remember? When they're, when they're doing this to me, it's a cop and yeah. cops who they're in with. Yeah. So they're, not, they're controlling the whole case through the Winter Hill gang as well. As yeah. um, soon as the cops knew he was in the court, That's given it. this evidence to drop the charges in the court. Okay, no, it's a fair play to him for doing all that. And that. So it's weird that all these years don't lie. I don't know, to... listen, I've never spoken about it since, but, but I try not to speak about it. I just think I've passed my lie detector tests. Didn't get drew in any fucking shit with them over this matter. It's obviously, obviously they went to hell gang, put them up to it. For whatever reasons, I thought they made a skid of them and said, oh, just say this for the film. Because they've got them involved in the film. And then you know what they like with me, for making stories up about me, they went to hell gang. I thought he may have just been doing it for them, for that film. You know, like, yeah. not thinking it could lead in a proper legal case or... You know, things like that. I thought it could either be for that, it could either be psychosis, it could be his illusions, or he could be getting tell to deal off the winter hell gun. Yeah. That's what I thought. And I thought, just let sleeping dogs lie, don't even speak about the case, because you could end up in trouble if I do, um, and leave the land the way it lays on that case. But, um, you know, years ago, they were able to paint their own narrative because you weren't on YouTube. They had their media guy out there doing all this book, doing all this YouTube stuff, doing all these things and all this sort of stuff. And now, obviously, you've come into the frame and that, and then you've ended up getting a fucking good following and that on your lives every night. I see crazy numbers on there. that they, This must absolutely fucking destroy them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you destroy them. Yeah, I'm not no, getting crazy it, numbers, but I'll get more than them. No, it is all, you get big it's numbers. All right. on the, and the thing with the lives and that, the lives won't get um, much after... But you know, at the time, you get they're very powerful. You get very good numbers on your lives to do that, undoubtedly. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, you, you, you become. I'm not like, but um, I think um, I've said from day one when when I get into Don Graham's for me now, I'm actually digging it up and that. Yeah. <laughs> it'll go, everything will go viral then. I've said this from day one. I know it is. I do know you not think this is all fucking dangerous? You're putting yourself in a dangerous position. I'm getting blamed for these murders. Yeah, yeah, but you're putting yourself in a fucking. I've passed lady test test of the top man in uh, Europe. Yeah, you put yourself. Oh, the home office shoes. Mm. And he passed me the highest marks possible and even more. And we showed that on the Whatever, listen, one. listen. We've that I've done that, screen. so I've got that behind me. Terry, what's his name? Mullins. Mullins, yeah. I've got that on my uh with these murders. And I think in the cops in the old days who are looking in can see they're telling lies about these murders, man. Can you, you can tell Lee McCookie and Glover, can you not? Well, I fucking can't. Clearly you said that since you've taken these lie detectors all those years ago that that they're not looking into you in the same way. Obviously. Not for the murders. No, so. Not for the murders. They know what's going on with the murders. Mm. They've just like eased off a bit with me, sent a lot of detective tests and a bit, not too much. He and I have had um, response sat on me fucking front door for two and a half years, yeah, harassing fucking me. Coming to the door, working and walking on his farm with the machine guns and that. Knocking me out of bed now when I was in the caravan and I've had fucking murders on with the cunt since the machine, since the lady tent I test. But the, if late, they've eased off. Yeah. A bit. A bit. Put on. Actually putting us through the most physical pain I've ever endured in my entire life. Two and a half hours of it. You're lucky, I Three weeks ago. Work. I still kind of touch me, I can touch it, but I can still kind of feel it probably. You need to get onto a lawyer, get some <coughs> claiming on that. They can't be treated people I've, like listen, that. Listen, I know it's like making claims against these cunts. Well, I know some people have been quite successful against it. Who, like, I thought who, I'll... Know, well, lifers in jail who... Well, I thought better than that again. I thought, you know what it is? When I, when I get us back in, I'll pick it up then. This is going to Parliament. I'm going to get them ratchets banned as a tool of torture by the police. And as, as I get bigger with Don Graham's form... Yeah. Um, I'll be taking that oh, tool, the, of, tool the, of torture the, out of Parliament <laughs> with me. But, um, so you know on your YouTube channel, what are you looking to sort of achieve at the moment? Are you just trying to paint your, obviously take, tell your side of the story? Because obviously you've got a propaganda fucking campaign against you, haven't you? That's, I've had a one gun against us and I've tried to put it right. And it's continuous? 
it's just never ending that's sweet um <clears throat> but this thing a long route in time the facts have got to come out certain facts and when they all come out and put together eventually because i'm still waiting a bit's evidence at the minute but you know where Humphreys, uh, he tries to um, paint this narrative, oh, I don't know why your problem is with him and it should be with these other people and not with him at all. But he's clearly on their side where he's doing so much propaganda work for them that uh, he's got to take some sort of responsibility, surely. Mr Humphreys doesn't take any responsibility for any of his actions because as far as he's concerned, He's just a manager, promoter. He doesn't admit everything, how close he is. Well, he does admit how close he is if he read his books and that. Friends of the family and that's his gang. Uh, he's just friendly with them, more friendly with them than he was with the Crate Twins. If you look at his history. Um, they're all into the same thing. Little boys. The whole, sorry, a lot of them. That's why they connect. Um, but we'll get into that in the future. But Mr Omri's job is promote them from his personal point of view promote them in this city this was where it started off even though it's ended up on the YouTube etc in this city to promote his boys above me in this city name wise um, is the biggest this the biggest that you know, even though I didn't put myself out that way anyway um, but that's been his job all along to put me doing in every way he fucking can and every time he writes or speaks about us it's to put me down in some way and every time he writes or speaks about them it's to put them up do you know what I mean it's ended up eventually on YouTube and then uh, but I've started in the city but sort of name wise because before the cops joined their legal team that day on the fight um, two months earlier when I had that scrap in the tune centre it's all on camera we'll get it if you want to apply for it, get the, I'd love you to get the interviews. Yeah, that'd be wicked. I've got the dates of the interviews because yeah. I've got my bill sheets on Bull's computer. Um, and even on the interview, they've got the video of the fight, me and him fighting in the tune centre, where I end up getting cut in that. It's all on video. Um, why are I going into that? I'm fucking going all over the place, mate. You should fucking keep us on track. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to try and get that video for sure. There you go. So you'll get the interview and the uh, video of, of that fight, etc. And you'll see, even in the interview room, I'm defending them. I'm saying, no, they haven't done this to me. I've done it to myself at home. I was changing this pane of glass, blah, 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 blah. Doing everything I've done my entire fucking life. Even in the jail. We had loads of incidents in our fucking jail. What we're never talking about, because obviously there's still people in jail and hitmen and you know things like that so we would have gone into loads of, loads of shit man it went on for a fucking decade didn't it hit ya hit there this that that that, that all the time when I was constant um, but uh, even though even an incident in the jail where the governors have had me oh, I've been doing a block and that attack where they tried to get when I got stabbed in the head who stabbed you some hitman fucking Raji didn't know who I was put his cell on protection the next day um, when he found out, but he's just a smart head and the pyramid and heroin yeah, and that. New pair happens. trainers, yeah, new pair true. trainers, and some heroin he got. But uh, the point I was getting the, governor, the security governor come to the cell to see us, and he says to us, uh, Who done it? Oh, well, no, I can't tell you that. I said, Oh, it's people who'd say it anyway, it's not to do with people in fucking prison. This, you know, just uh, well, who was it who'd say it? I said, Oh, I can't fucking tell you that. Uh, he asked us something else and I said, oh, I can't fucking tell you, to be honest. So I was just, just not being nasty and out, just, that's my way. Old school attitude, you know what I mean? And I was in a, uh, still in the hospital cell at this point because I had stabbed us, but it only went halfway through my skull over the spike before I knocked the cunt out. I smashed him the bits I did. He was unconscious before the screws gone. Um, I was writing a letter, my back was turned. I got attacked, but that's what it's like in there. Maximum security prison. <laughs> that's a norm. <laughs> that's a norm. <laughs> it was me. I just hadn't learned the fucking full rules and regs of the place yet. Um, so even when I, when, I, when I was getting, he was trying to talk to us, this governor, um, and I was just like that with him. And he was walking through the door, I says, in there, what's happening with me then, governor? 
because um, I'm sitting in a hospital cell there at the minute. I've, I've been sorted out. They couldn't deal out with it. Because um, it only went halfway through my skull. It was just like a little... It was a spike, you see. Um, and he turned around and he went, uh, Oh, well, I can't tell you that, can I? <laughs> you know, same as what I've been testing to him through the interview. Well, not an interview, when he'd been trying to talk to us, who done it, who was it outside, and who was this. I was just saying, ah, oh, well, I can't tell you that, can I? I can't tell you this. And he was walking through, I says, what's happening to my mate and then? And he turned around at the door, he said, ah, oh, well, I can't tell you that, can I? <laughs> and he shut the door. <laughs> that was the security governor of the prison. But you know, uh, your enemies, these Winter Hill gang, are, you, are they still active criminals to this day? I, I would guess so. And so, but I'm just guessing. Is your life in danger then? Like, Why would I think my life's in danger? Well, if they're active criminals and like you're so outspoken about them and that, then obviously they. I would say if if my life's in danger, it's more because of the uh, Operation Insight and the murder intelligence and what's going on there and the need because of they've already cooked the books on all these murders on me. They'd like to get rid of us. Obviously. Oh, I, oh, they're under cops. Oh, I, it's been a load of attempts already, man. Yeah. Already, it's been a number of fucking number of murder attempts on me. It's been a great number. See, see that one I've just been talking about in the jail, where it only went halfway through my skull. From that moment in time in prison, I was convinced that the authorities were in on my fucking murder there, attempted murder. Can you imagine having them thoughts run through your mind in jail? I didn't even t speak to anybody about these thoughts. Here, it turns out I was right, though, man, listen. I was fucking right, but it's been the Ben Cops, so these have been in with, and it. The new was anyway. The new things they shouldn't have knew about my movements to set up that. They do. They do it for fun anyway. I think in this Chelsea is where they put enemies. On yeah, the but same they, way but, but they, they, they knew something that they shouldn't have knew, man. Yeah. And but I'm a double county prisoner. They shouldn't have knew certain movements with us. Yeah. But they knew they pre-planned the murder attempt, not me movements, and they should never knew my movements. We've been double county prisoner. Even when they're moving you from prison to prison, the screws don't find out until the day you're getting moved. So I knew when, after this murder attempt yep. that they knew details of my movements through things I'd found out. It turns out on me though. But from that moment, I thought it's authorities. I wasn't thinking of fucking these intelligence cops who'd say those ones that's given evidence in court and all that. It's been. Yep. When you're double fucking cut to a prisoner, all your prison movements is given to a over to the local intelligence regularly, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been them bent countryside, when it? Like letting them know, haven't they? Of course, if they know where you're at prior to you. Aye, 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 you tend to be them. So, but from that point, I didn't realise that at that point. It wasn't until Freddie Knight's murder trail and everything else that's come with big style since then. So you did well to get through the fucking prison sentence as you did then? I right? didn't even discuss it with anyone, because I knew I did discuss it with anyone. But them thoughts, they'd think you're off your head. Mm. No, you have to be careful, keep some. So I just kept them resell for that reason. I didn't want people to think I was paranoid or not. Because yeah. I would have done. At that point. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's plenty of people in these cat A's dangerous folks well, that would have take hits out on people, aren't they? Oh, it's regular, that, in the jail. Mm. This wasn't a cat A one, I was just a fucking idiot who didn't know who I was. And they just. Worked them in well, most of the time these junkies don't care if they're going to get paid it was one of them charge. jobs it was one of yeah, them they, jobs they, they don't care who but it is but all the main hit men weren't uh, yeah, they don't involved care, like, name this name that they, all they need is a fix do you know what I mean when they need all the main fix. ones so they were all friendly with me anyway and friends of mine and that all the main ones but like you say you get junkies in the jail and who'll do out for anybody and they didn't tell him who I was and, and he'd done it before he even knew who I was mm -hmm. he found out when he was doing the block put him next door to Frank Burley and Frankie Mullins, uh, two people like that, and they went, you've tried to hurt, you've tried to do what, to who? And that's when he found out, and he went straight on protection. You know when you're in the Cat A's, I don't know if you've mentioned it before in the last one, did you come across any of like serious the names, figures in the Cat A's? May I, all of them? Yeah. All of them, because I've been re the system, you see. Yeah, because you get moved fairly frequently when yeah. you're the Cat A thing, did you? Double Cat yeah. Yeah, so probably every six months or every year you'd get moved. Uh, yeah, like that, I. Just went around Sometimes they leave you a bit longer if you're settled and there's no trouble. Um, you know, it depends on what show you've got going on. Mama, I had two gang wars gang. Mm. Start to finish. We're on two fronts, with two gangs. Obviously, uh, the Harrods, they put the Harrods in the dispersal system at first, they did, but they got took with the dispersal for a couple of years, which left us just fighting the Winter Hill gang battle. 
I was only one away, gang war gun, didn't I? <laughs> there were Dominic, Dominic Noonan nearly had one gun with the Cockneys. So he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a character on here, Dominic Noonan. Yeah. Well, he's in jail, and I see what these jails going to run the bottom, and the teenage kids and that. But other than that, side, obviously you've got that side of him, if they're true. Uh, and then they never say the, the, the Dominic when he's in the jail. He helps anybody, he's the same as when he's on the documentary, he just... And when he's in solitary confinement, he's uh, in that window. He's in our lane when you get in the club, you get like a comp there. It keeps everybody entertained anyway. They might hate Dominic, that person in solitary confinement. It neat all day long. When he's on the wing, he's doing the, the governor's office, defending people, being a Mackenzie man, like Army Sister Lizard, I represent him. Because yeah. he hadn't got the clue what they're doing. And he's always in defending people. He's always helping people, to be honest. Fair play, I know this the a serious, serious family, weren't they? Once upon a time, whether they still are today, yeah. Till Dominic made that documentary, he ruined their name. Well, well he turned the Noonan name into a little gay gang, didn't he? <laughs> sort of thing. The world way he looked in it went, well, that's just a little gang of little gay boys, isn't it? Yeah, that's what he turned the Noonan name into. Yeah, no comment, but... I, yeah. thought, the, I yeah. thought the authorities done that on purpose to yeah. destroy yeah. the... Noonan's yeah, reputation in Manchester. Best, like, that was your mate who did that with him, McIntyre, wasn't it? Did the Aye. Thing with him. Yeah. So. But know. Dominic, the LA you played along with, didn't he? Yeah, of course. But that's what you see on the documentary is pretty much what, what Dominic is when he's in jail. You know what I mean? Just the same. Mm. But he's not a bad person that way. And when he won in jail, he's not a bully, he's not. Because you get them in jail, you know? Mm. Um. Who was the worst bully you came across in the case? Oh, there's tons and tons of them. Tons every and tons. Every jail, there's. Every jail. Because you get lifers who aren't getting out. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, and they didn't get visits, and they've got to survive in the fucking jail. Yeah, and I've that's how they survive. That cat thing's fucking dangerous. That's the only way they survive in the jail. Some of them through intimidation and getting money off people, and. But uh, Adam tolerated me. Mm. Full stop. Yeah, you can't. Of none of them. I've facing every jail man, every fucking jail I've been in. Everybody knows me for that. I don't take any bollocks. I left everybody unconscious. Every fight I had, for start to finish, everybody, even me attack out the one I've just been talking about, every single one of them were left unconscious. And is that the worst anyone got you in any of these aye, attacks? Aye, aye, yeah. well, aye. That's aye. fucking bad, isn't it? Lucky Before I got him. Yeah. That spike had went from his skull, he'd get us. Oh, fucking hell. Aye, from behind. But I, that before I got him. <laughs> That's how it happens in jail, though. Even last person. He wakened the beast, he did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he got knocked out fairly quickly after, and I'm sure he did. He got, after he got smashed off every fuck time the screws were the noise in the cell, man. The cell was getting smashed up. After I smashed him off every wall, bang, bang, bang. Head, bang, bang, bang. Give him a good smashing. He's got the knife in his fucking hand, hasn't he? I've got hold of one of his wrists. Yeah, you know. Well, he's just fucking took one sway with us. Um, but uh, he was unconscious when he arrived. But you know, in the cafes and that back in them day, um, were you smoking throughout your entire sentence? No. No, the cafes is hard to get stuff in. Isn't it? Fucking dispersal system. Get a, get yeah, a no smoke. No chance. Fucking no chance. That's right. Yeah. Heroin, plenty. Weed. <sighs> no chance. Take no chance. I look. If you get one joint every three months. Six months in the maximum security prisons. Mm. So I loved it in uh, Strange Ways for I got a name ball straight in. <laughs> straight in. Smoking hard then. Wait, well, everybody was on the wing. <laughs> nice. But the prices these days in um from what I'm told in the in the prison system for weed and tobacco and that's absolutely ridiculous where you're not allowed to smoke in the system anymore, it's five hundred pounds for a patch of tobacco, you know. It's ridiculous, man. But um, all the jails. But you know, once you know what they should have just done, they should have stopped selling it, and now just get now on with it, because we normally kind of get it. Yeah. It's even easier to pack it in. Mm. Now it's just not there, and you, now you kind of get a smoke. You can pack it in much easier. Yeah, yeah, of course. Rather than thinking about it, where so. Where I can go and get one off the neighbour, and go and get one, yeah, or whatever. Once all them, once all that cuts off, it's easy to pack in cigarettes. But um, of all the jails you've done, um, including obviously the Spanish and well as well what, what's the toughest jail you've ever been in in the british jails mm. well it used to be the dispersal system used to be parkhurst and the other four prisons 
Um, but then the clothes park was down. Um, the clothes are doing because it was rough as fuck. Um, and then after that, it become white. more was a. Uh, what Parkhurst was the worst at that point? Yeah, Did you at do that time point. No, no, they just shut it down just prior to me going to prison. And they'd moved all them inmates into the other four prisons, which was Whitemore, Long Lawton. I'll take them two prisons are the put the most violent to the two of them. They're all violent, they're all fucking violent. But if you have to sort of the least violent, you know what I mean? Even though they're all extremely violent, all of them. But if you had them, because obviously if that one hasn't had, that, I was watching a documentary a couple of months ago on YouTube, some kid who'd done eight years in Long Lawton. Said there was seven murders while he was in there, and he was on the psychological effect. It's got on you just having to live in there while all these fucking murders has gone on within the prison. Do you know what I mean? So, so if you compare prisons like that to Franklin, you wouldn't have loads of murders in Franklin like that prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, on top but of that, you've got people topping themselves on top of this well. all the time and cutting themselves up. I see a stat a couple of days ago, you know, um, of IPP prisoners. 200 of them have died behind bars in the last hour. Because they no, no, take away no, all no. that hope. Yeah, 200 people have died behind bars, yeah? Of those 200, 70 of them have killed themselves. That's a crazy stat, isn't it? That's nearly half of them have fucking killed themselves on these. That's not even including the ones outside who have killed themselves, so... Well, my nephew's just been released today. He's done about four or five years, or Dylan. Some doorman, friends who were Mr. Humphreys, apparently, made a statement against them and had them took off the streets. But the charges got dropped. And then they decided to keep him in for four or five years on his license because of what was said in the statements by these doormen. What license is he on? Is he on one IPP? of them IPPs. Oh my God, they're horrific. That's what I'm saying. I've just said a minute without charge. Yeah. Four or five years. Yeah, there. Yeah, and it's Without charge. Mate, it's crazy. Doing uh, Mr. Humphreys' friend's statements. They got made to be illegal, so how are the people still serving the sentences on them? People they can do what they want you when they've got you under these yeah. sort of. Yeah, they're worse than actually a life sentence for murder. These ones are, these IPPs are. Uh, they are, aye, aye, they are, aye. Keep it as long as you want, yeah. and if uh, you don't tick all the boxes, even though their boxes might be a titty little thing, you may be back and try to fucking screw. Oh, and yes, wor the, the wor it's worse for the younger ones than it is for the older ones. It's, you know, the older ones have learned to tolerate certain things. Of course. And that's why the young, and it's only the younger ones who get the IPP sentences, really. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and some of them have been there for years, for note. Yeah, fucking no, out. I've met people like that, it's uh, terrible. We've got a local one that's always in the papers called Danny Witherspoon. It's had a minute since he's been really young, man, on these daft IP shit. But, um, you know, when you're in the dispersals in the, in the, in the system, was the Muslim thing, uh, were the Muslims a powerful no, not then. The system then? No, not then. Um, there's Muslims in there, of course. but not, it wasn't like what they say it's like nowadays. I used to get on with all the Muslims, I used to cook, too. learn cook, cook curries and that with them. Me too, very respectful, good people, clean people. That's what I see, well, I... And yeah, it completely, I'd not been around people of Muslim faith before jail and it completely opened my eyes to it and yeah, it's not what I've... Uh, in the West End in Newcastle, it's, a, it's always been one of the largest Pakistani communities in England, going back since before my day. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've been brought up in the West End, I run the Pakistanis and I've always found them that way. The more, the more thingy uh, cultural wise than us, better. Yeah. Look after the old and everything like that, and better family values. Yeah, stick and together. Aye, do but, well uh, together. So, so I want any problems with uh, Pakistanis and out. Mm. But um, apart from obviously this arrest, the mind if I caught one robbing us of a change, we change you'd be all the Pakistani bastards that that five minutes you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> but does that make you racist <laughs> no. no you know what I mean but, it's just because that one's done something to you but um, going back to those the Don Graham stuff when, when are you looking to go to uh, I was going to talk to you about it to see if you wanted to do some things on it and then and get something arranged it? and so what are you looking to do go and dig up the fucking land? no not dig up the grave I was wanting to start off with some of the witnesses I used to go into the parties I want to find out which cop has frequented the parties over Don's as part of getting the ball rolling, yeah, and start so there. So, people don't know who was Don Graham, tell the viewers who he was. He's a, he's a lifer in prison. He's been convicted of murdering his girlfriend for just for money. Um, she transferred three hundred thousand pound into his bank that day. That she disappeared. Cause she had plenty of money. It was just his bit on the side. Um, 
This is in 2011. And what were the circumstances? They she went her, missing. Did shoot her? What, she, did she ever found? No, but they've convicted them in, in 2015 of a murder. Okay. Because of all circumstances, all the cases, he, he's definitely murdered her. Do and you know so what I mean? who was Don Graham prior to this? Was he a gangland figure or anything like no, that? Did you know who he was or did anyone... Look, he's like a, he's like one of, one of these people who think they are, but I just always thought just on the fringe of wannabe. You know what I mean? But just on the fringe, half straight, not proper villains. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's always been one of them. Um, I don't know that much about him, but what I do know about him is he's part of the Winter Hill Gang because he all party at his place and I have been partying at his place since since before I bought these cottages because this is when I first found out about Don Graham. Um, found out about him. I don't know if I bought these cottages in the late 80s or early 90s, but I found out, no, this is when I found out that the Windhill Gang were partying at his place, when when the person who showed me these cottages realised I was buying them, and said, yeah, but I have mark a card, there's a fella comes to the village called Don Graham, uh, and your enemies drink at his place every weekend, this is when I found out, at this point, when I bought yeah. this, this first cottage. Um, so, other than that, I just know things of them, I have met him, um, but do I know him? No. I've been invited up to his farm a number of times with me fucking self, to be honest, over the years. And it's become apparent that Don Graham is the keeper of some of the murder bodies that the Winter Hill Gang's accusing me of committing. He's got them on his farm buried. So in these circumstances, obviously, like you say, it must be a case that the bodies haven't been found in these other... Well, he's murders. got Kick has a body there. And, yeah. And there's, the, the, it's become apparent there's obviously other bodies there. Even the police are obviously ex accepting there's other bodies there now because they've went and spoke to Gordon Warren's daughter on the day Don was convicted of murdering Janet Brown. And they've knew, right, he's convicted killer, he's definitely killed her. Then he must have killed Gordon Warren too, when you look into the circumstances of Gordon Warren. Yeah. Gordon Warren went missing and the fund he's caught on Don's farm. Do you know what I mean? The, he said to the police, oh, he just left it yeah. Somebody picked him up at the gate. The farm's in the middle of fucking nowhere, you know? It's on a hilltop. And so, like, what makes you convinced that they're, like, buried there or... Um why have the police not dug up the ground, or where, where's this? Well, they've tried from? to dig up the ground, and it's rough terrain. It's an old, the land's an old pit quarry sort of thing. You know where it's fucking like that mm. on a mountain top, all shapes and sizes. It's not like yeah, there's a lot of land there as well. Isn't there? Forty acres, but it's all rough terrain. There's a police report on it uh, on a, on YouTube. It's a news report with the police officer woman talking. This is when I realised what was what, when I watched this report. Because in this report, the woman says, we've got the gun penetrating thing, she says, but we can't use it on most of the land. She says, because of the terrain, um, we can't search it. Um, and she says, and there's pits all over the land, miners, shaft pits all over the land. She mentions this on the report. Uh, and, then, and this is when I was part of me piecing it all together, because I knew Kicker's body had went down a pit. Up that way, and loads of other factors brought it all together. What I kind of think of at the minute, but um, he's the keeper there. But they've kicked him in England's body. So, what uh, sentence did uh, Don Graham get in 2015? Natural life, he's never getting out. Is it? Fuck you know. And you've been telling he's never getting out under this new law. I forget the new law. Fuck but you know, if you don't tell them where the body is, yeah. Yeah, you're, no, you're not even considered for parole. And they're convinced, obviously, then... He's, he's convicted, convicted, he's lost every appeal. They've sat him doing last year and says, right, under this law, you're not even applying for parole in... He's 70 over 70, no man. Is he? Type 1 yeah. diabetes. And he's got over 20 years to serve out of his minimum 30-year sentence, you know what I mean? So he's not he's not saying the gate, is he? Is he? Very, chances he, are very slim. Uh, very slim. Um and they're telling them no, uh, even then you can't apply for parole. So we're keeping you. 
So that's a situation he's in. Yeah, fucking hell. So you want to... Um... But then then you've got all these other bodies on the farm. They've definitely got Gordon Mons there. They've definitely got Michael Stone's body there. Um, for sure. I think this is why Gordon Warren and Michael Stone have been murdered. Because they've helped get rid of the body along with Don, yeah. their friend. Because they're mates with him. Yeah. He's killed the two of them, but he's mates with them. Drinks with them and going around and shooting on his farm with them. And so is Michael Stone now. All mates. Um, so as for this thing where they're all doing a drug deal the day they went missing, yeah, he's possibly telling them, get as much money in as you can because I'm going to kill you later. He's done that with both of them. When you look at what he's done with Janet Prune, that's what he's done with them too. He's two friends. That's the, so the drug deal isn't the... The motive behind him killing them, I'm saying. He's just had them collect money in because he knew he's been going to kill them anyway. Yeah. Look what he's done to Janet Prune, he's fucking mistress. Um, I say they have helped get rid of Kicker's body for sure because uh, Michael Stone had trouble with Kicker at that time. If you check all the newspaper reports, etc., he had big trouble with him. Mm. Michael Stone had uh, give evidence against Kicker's mate or Kicker court. Oh, I got into the front, his front door. So there was trouble going on there between Kicker and Michael Stone. But Michael Stone hasn't killed him, that's for sure. Mm. So, but has he helped get rid of the body? I think so. And I think he's died for it. I just think uh, they've used them to get rid of his body because they've been handy at the time and then they're getting worried. They like, put two of them. Mm. And they've left Don, you know what I mean? And they all drink together in the same pub, doing a tune, uh, the farmer's rest. And who owns this farm to this day, then? Does Don still own it? No, she's got new owners. Is it? <sighs> you gone down there and told them? Pardon? Have you gone down there and told them? <laughs> I'm not sure if they're aware or not. Um, but I think they'll do all right, because if I'm right, and everybody agrees with us that I am right, fucking everybody. It might become a true crime hotspot then, then they might be able to tell They'll be able to make a seller for, for the, the for, I film people in the future. Oh, for video and yeah. Dean, oh, hey yeah. man, what? This is the biggest unsolved murder case in the history of the UK, man, if I'm right here. I am right, man. Mm. I'm not saying thing. it's just who's involved. Well, I know who's involved with Kicker's murder. That's why I want to start the investigations there. Which cop has from that fucking crime squad drunk at these parties with the Winter Hill gun. Because that's where the bodies went. And they're all involved in that body. Mm. Kickers, not the others I'm around about. And so why would they want to get rid of Kicker at that time? Oh, have, I, have I not already explained? No, go on, just go briefly, real quickly. Kicker was part of them, part of the gang, Winter Hill gang, Dean Robberies with them. Yep. They're getting a list of armed robberies. Yep. Um, the, the list had come off Bent Crime Squad. And it was the top 40, 14 or 40, I think it's 40. Top 40 places in the northeast what held the largest amounts of money. Do you know what I mean? Like security yeah, yeah, departments yeah, and that. And Kick had been dating and maybe maybe a van. Maybe you know maybe so the goodness of the crime squad apparently. And Kick had been doing some of the robberies with the Wendell gang on this list and scored and get enough money to say, right, bye bye, I'm away. I don't want to do any more. But then after the, after he done that, they continued doing robberies on that list, yeah. and Kicker felt that he was entitled because he's involved in getting that list yeah, at the beginning yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. Super percentages. Yeah, that's why he was working, and he was going around demanding that off them. Okay. Each and every robbery that they done, and he knew had been on the list, he'd go around and demand money off them. First they paid him a couple, one or two. Yeah. Then they said enough's enough though, and then he went at the demand with them. And went heavy with them and fucking all sorts. Was he quite a serious fellow in his own room? Well, he, he kicked his own brother's door in and when he was in the bath, he went in and fucking stuck a knife in him when he was sat in the bath. And yeah. he'd been under Michael Stone's front door um, as well. I don't know why. I don't know if he's involved in the robberies or what, but at that time, he'd been in Michael Stone's front door. And Michael Stone had come out and stabbed Kicker's mate about 20 times with a big knife. Six foot four, 25 stone with a big knife come to the door. <laughs> Uh, did you know Kicker at all? Yeah, no, yeah I vaguely, you know. Knew him, knew him. I've been yeah. on a drink with him. It's, I heard. He's all right, fellow, was he? Yeah, I found him all right. 
Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Um, I went on a drink all day with him the last time before he disappeared. I often wondered, I thought, I hope he never disappeared that fucking day to myself. You know, everything else that's going on, no, honestly. And, um, um, no one ever got uh, charged or anything then with Kicker's thing, and it was just literally a unsolved, disappearing thing. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, it's one day he uh, disappeared, gone. He went on a bit of work, he used to tell him he was going on a bit of work. But for whatever, it might have been a sudden post office robbery that they'll tell him he was going on. Because for whatever reasons, he jumped back in with them to do this one piece of work. But it wasn't really a piece of work. He was getting fucking he, shot. He was the piece of work. Yeah, they done they done to him the same as what they done to Frank, the craze done to Frank E. Mitchell, is it? Yeah. When he got in the back of the van. Yeah. Done the same to kicker. Picked him up at one pub. Drove him around the pub, get, picked the rest of us up and got in and shot him. And then he was put in a put of a car on the back of a skip wagon and sent up to where Don Graham's farm is, run that area, and put down a pit shaft on the land. That's where Kicker was sent. Mm. They've dug five cars up on Don's farm. Have they? So, so they have been digging. Oh, right, when the police found were looking at Janet Brown's body, yeah. they found five cars buried. Yeah, yeah fucking hell. <laughs> no, that's the delivery vehicles, isn't it? Yeah, why did they stop digging then at that point? They should Because it's rough back. terrain and. It's cost them millions and uh, millions. And, and the millions. cars, they might not have been able to bury his dad and that, but they found the five cars. Yeah. <sighs> and and I got to tell Kicker's body went doing a pit shaft, and there's pit shafts on there too. You know, like two hundred feet deep and one out at the bottom of them, and yeah, fucking hell, you need to try and buy the farm, don't you? Start I think they would let one go on and video it, the people. Start digging. Barry who comes just says you can just walk on anyway from the back end. There's no fences or not. Yeah, no, fucking hell. So I said, but you'd have to send a drone on first to find out where the pit shafts were, wouldn't you? What you reckon they've just chucked them down the pit shafts? Okay, that's what doing a pit shaft. Yeah. For sure. And how do you know that? Because I could tell that years ago. Oh, I've been blamed for this murder, remember. So. And who would know that you went down the, the, the shaft, though? It's a long story, that, like, but. Um, what, someone who was there at the time with fucking thingy doing it? Or? I think. I've just been told certain. You've got to look at every other murder as well, man, where they've been fitting me up with every, every other murder. Freddy's. Murder, Viv's murder. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And McKicker's murder. Some of the details. I think they've told me the details as part of fitting me up. Is it what's been going on behind the scenes with the bank cops and that? Mm. So I, I, I think it's things as went on like that with Michael Stone's murder too. I think when David Glover burgled my safe with Cookie, there was something they were. They might not knew. We'll take it out of it. Well, just the money, you know. Listen, man, they wouldn't knew what was going on. They wouldn't even fucking tell them what there was going on, man. They would have just tell them burgle the pub and take the safe. How much did they get out of you? About three. There was about eight grand altogether, but about five grand of it was checks, I think, back then. Oh, so they, yeah. So about three grand. But three grand, even three back then, is a lot of money. Yeah. In the 90s. But it was the contents of the safe they were after. The contents of the safe was handed over to the cop called Smith. And then it was handed back to Glover. Contents. So I see uh, David Glover though on that uh, interview of Atwood, and he was saying that you were extorting anyone with money. I've never extorted anybody in my entire fucking life. That <laughs> and the, the way he's on about. The only one, listen, I've never taxed anybody in my life. The only person I fucking taxed was fucking Brian fucking Charlton. After you said, oh, I after you said, no, this I'll not tell you what he done, but he done something bad. Well, you just said about the thing that he fucking kind of set you up on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. This is after that. That's after bad. that, this what, is he else this is else? after that. What else? Um, I took ten grand of him. Yeah, sent it around. Uh, I shared it between the lads who took it and, and Kevin what? Doyle's wife, the lad who was in jail for him, who was charged with armed robbery with me. That's why I yeah, done yeah, the money because yeah. okay. he'd set me up, and it'd come up obvious to us. We he'd set me up when we were in jail, gone from the depths and everything. Um, so I sent the money run to the, his wife. And so how did that conversation go with him? Did he kind of accept that he basically had and then gave you the money or he just said... No, I just took it that time, just conned him, took it off him. Because I knew he'd set me up and then the next time I t just took some money off him. I just sent the lads under the garage. So he ended up getting a big sentence a couple of years ago, I think, didn't he, on the continent? 
Brian did. Yeah. I think he got that for 20, didn't he, or something like this. I sent the lads one to his garage. The phone is off from the garage. He says, right, where you at? He says, what do you want? He says, two brand new milks or brand fair new. And didn't even have a plate on. Um, oh, there's a roller. Which one do you want? <laughs> so I sat there. But anyway, he pulled a few quid up instead. Yeah, he ended up becoming super powerful, didn't he? Who? See, after even after this, uh, Curtis Warren. In, in, in the customs world and things like that, in but not scene. not in the real crime world. No, in the drugs game. Yeah, ah, in the, the drugs, drugs game world. Aye. And becoming a massive player, didn't he, over the last twenty years? He's been working with the customs for a while, man. Now he's just he's a tool to the customs, who allow him to get involved with criminals and mm. get involved deep as well. Deep as you want, because you know, and then the common fire at some point where he's gonna be used to get them off stomach. That's what they've done with him time and time again. But he's, he's been cops, cops up along route, obviously, the T C lot. Said Ben Cops. Yeah, from early. Yeah. Early 90s. Because he, he, he's reeling with the Ben Cops, he is him. The Berryman Cops and that. Mm. He's riding with them. Up to his fucking tits, Whedon and Nags. They called his two cops. If I remember really, that's the two that was borrowing the cars up. But what the one with borrowing cars, what they were really doing was if they needed a new car to go on the holders without, they'd go into his showroom and just take whatever car was there. Yeah, you know, the showroom I'm talking about. Thick as thieves, probably. So, but yeah, interesting that you knew Charrington back all them times. I've worked with Charrington for a long time. Mm. Sat in his house with his family, sat in my house with my family, you know what I mean? Yeah. Got an arm over the years. When he was a little, little villain. Till he done that with the post office. Mm. It was definitely a set up. Um, it's why he wanted to go out that way to set you up like they did for such a crime if you didn't commit them crimes as well. Uh, and I've thought about it deeply. It was, it was just to put us on the man next to him. I was up for the sudden post office robbery. Wireless cops got into the court to collapse the case by blaming me. Mm. 